<laughs> hey guys, how you doing? Oh, I love these guys. <laughs> All right. I just wanted you guys to know that I'm not just representing myself here, right? So first of all, we've already had 4,000 donors to the campaign. You see the good folks here that have showed up. We just were in a Quinnipiac poll and uh, polled higher than the governor of Arkansas and the governor of North Dakota. So there, according to that poll, we literally have millions of people in America who say we would like Jenk to be the president of the United States of America. It's not just that though, I'm also representing 25 million naturalized citizens, uh, over 50,000 of whom are in New Hampshire. So we're all faced with this impossibility. Do you lie and fill out the form so you could be on the ballot and have people think you're a real candidate and you could run and you could be supported and you could show up in a poll and you can get donations and you could be a real candidate? And then if the Supreme Court blocks it, you say, hey, that's, that's America, and the Supreme Court has weighed in on it. But if we're blocked in each state where we don't even get to go to the courts, and you say, okay, well, you're allowed to cross out this, but you're not allowed to cross out that, and you're, you did this slightly wrong, and the, but the other guy can lie, and he can get on the form, right? And he can get on the ballot. As, as naturalized citizens, there are things that we experience that you guys don't, which is normal, right? You, you haven't lived our perspective, right? And so what we've experienced our whole lives is, when we say we're not born here, everybody goes, ha ha, you can't be president. Now they don't mean any harm by it, they've read it in eighth grade in a civics class, we also read in eighth grade that Pluto was a planet, turns out it's not. Uh, but they remember that. <laughs> it might be back to a planet, right? And, and that's for the scientists to decide, and this is for, the Supreme Court to decide. I brought the 14th Amendment here because it's so clear. It says all persons born or naturalized have due process and equal protection of the laws. And if the Supreme Court says, no, it doesn't mean that. I don't know why they're gonna say that. They put naturalized in the amendment, right? And okay, and if they say it, they say it. But guys, you're also part of due process and equal protection of the laws. And it's right there. It says born or naturalized. And so if you say no here today, and I know what you're saying, you're saying, hey, listen, I get it. You crossed out something and the other guy could, but you couldn't for good reasons, et cetera. But what we'll hear, and I'm not, just, I'm not speaking for myself, I know what the perception is gonna be out there. And part of the reason I know is that the minute I declared the candidacy, I got text after text after text of all my friends that were naturalized citizens that I didn't even realize were naturalized citizens. And they all said, please fight for us. Because from, from our perspective, we're told over and over again, you don't belong. And you know, there's 700 naturalized citizens who got the Congressional Medal of Honor. And we were willing to lay down our lives. Uh, we're willing to do everything to be loyal to this country. And our immigrant parents brought us here when we were little kids. And they brought us here because they love America. I mean, imagine rooting yourself up from your home that you love and going to a different country because you say, I love that country so much. That's the place where my kids are gonna get to live the American dream. This is it though. This is what the American dream looks like. And we just don't want it to end here. I don't mind if the courts say, no, you don't get to live that dream. The Supreme Court already ruled in Schneider that we are not second class citizens. But if they reverse their course and they say, no, you are second class citizens, you don't fully belong here, you're not really American, then I can live with that. But I don't want you to say that. I want you to use your independent judgment to say the form has a natural absurdity and let this guy go on the ballot. It is not the end of the equation. If the court's overruled, then the court's overruled. But for now, all of those people, whether they live in New Hampshire or across the country, are waiting for you guys to say, it's okay. Today, you get to be an American. And, and then I'll end on this. The reason we came here, we could have gone to Nevada first. We came here first, because this is the home of democracy. That's what New Hampshire is known for. And so right now, people are trying to take away the voice of the New Hampshire voters in this cycle. They're saying New Hampshire shouldn't be this important.
don't take their voice away on this too. If it turns out the voters of New Hampshire say, yes, we want this guy, that would not be definitive, but it would matter. Court cases say that it matters what the voters say. And the voters can reject me and say, oh no, we're not interested, and the court would take that into account as well. But if the name's on the ballot and we rise in the polls and, then we are and the voters are allowed to have their voice and weigh in, that will matter to the courts. So please let New Hampshire speak, especially at a moment like this. Please let them vote and have that voice. That's exactly the point of New Hampshire. And that's why New Hampshire is considered the home of democracy. So we're just asking you to live up to that gold standard that New Hampshire has set. And, and, and maybe today, one time you get to say, yeah, Cenk, you're a real American and you can run.